saw those four wins and the highlights as we came on the air for LSU against top ten teams this season. Great resume, but despite that, Ohio State jumped them and went to number one this week. A surprise to many. Yeah. Burrow steps up, dumps it off. There's Justin. Play fake by Burrow. So good at dodging the run and throwing on the run. He's on target to Jamar Chase. They get up there very quickly. Didn't look like the Aggies were ready. They lined up. They went quick. All three. Johnny Manziel, deep drop by Mon. One of the best play callers. In fact, we talked to David for defense and what the Golden Dogs possess. He has a lot of shaking. Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman. After the... Would have never thought Alabama could score that many points with Mac Jones against that Auburn defense. And was he aware? Nifty. Outstanding players, his pass in Penn, of Michigan with ease in Jimbo Fisher's first year. And Aggie Lamb takes it to Chase up, comes inside. The brother and young Joe Brady from the New Orleans Saints to help revamp their passing. As Peter told us a couple of weeks ago, if you Another play fake by Burrow and a deep strike. And an open receiver. Touchdown. On second and ten, against some pressure, we'll make a judgment about Tua's health after the hip injury. Mom, 68 passing, and two TAs. Here's Ty Davis. We'll bring a blitz. Burrow. They pick up the blitz. He steps up. He steps back. Davis Price, first Friday. New guys at left tackle and right tackle. And they built depth by doing that, but they haven't missed a beat. And James Craig, the offensive line coach, Ed Orgeron was raving about him in our meeting yesterday. Thinks he's done a great job with this group up front. And you can't do anything with the skill people if you don't have those guys. Yes, and coach Craig might be the MVP. But they have a lot of MVP care. Got the third down only five times in the entire game. This is a massive human being. He's blocking. He stands him up and just holds him out of the hole. Get Georgia. And they made a game of it against the Dodge. But whatever they play here, it's got to come from Kellen Mott. But they got to protect him first. Isaiah Scott with an ankle injury most of the year. Grant Delpit, one of the best safeties when he's healthy in all of college football, has had to battle through a lot of stuff this year. Did not play last week. They come at Jamon, he's in full retreat and just throws it away. He gets forced out of the pocket, but he doesn't panic. We've seen him make a couple throws. And then when it's the decision is the right one to run, he's got a lot of green grass. This was his longest run of the game, and again, over 35 yards, 38 yards rushing, more than AM has offensively. He's just excellent in his decision making, 28 yards, I should say, as a rusher tonight. A lot of talent on the South Shoe team. Finalist for the Jim Thorpe Award is the best defensive back. Jamar Chase for the Belindicott Award is the best wide receiver. And Joe Burrow is going to have a busy month in December. And finalist for the Maxwell Award is the player of the year. The Davey O'Brien Award for the best quarterback. Of course, already up 28-0. Burrow fires on time. Edwards Elaire. Nice cut back to the inside. Right to tight end. This guy is the secret weapon because he has an NFL skill set playing in college football. Runner, receiver, locker, does it all. Morning award, the most versatile player in college football. You mentioned he was one of the 10 semifinals for the Dope Walker Award as the best running back in the country. Tony, I bet you didn't know he can put a car together and he can also catch a frog. Now those are some versatile hands. Now, I've been frog hunting, but I went with a gig where you gig the frog. I never tried to grab a frog. That's pretty skillful. Here you go. A uh, deep throw. Uh, 16 out of 19 in the field goals. He's made his last three, nine of his last ten. This is from 51. 
an overtime game between these two teams. 26 yards on 19 plays for Texas A&M. Kellen Mond on target should be a first down for 10 passing for 21 yards. Yes. Shooting into the gap, beating that right guard to the corner. 58% passer last year. And had a good year. This year it's just through the roof. Picked a good time to do it, that's for sure. They have had a blast. 6'3", 217 pounds. And he's pretty fearless too. Great pressure to Adam after the 18 yard run is batted on the loss. The offensive line of a year ago, this offensive line is not as good for AM. Mod! Burrow completes it for Davis Price. Four possessions and four touchdowns for LSU. 30 minutes. I don't know that Dave Aranda and Ordron could ask for anything more. Held AM to 40 yards of total offense. Made life miserable for Kellen Mond. I mean, he was 5 of 14. They sacked him three times. Consistent pressure. Now, the question, can they put another 30-minute performance like that on top of this to change the perception of this LSU defense a little bit? Kellen Mond dropped for a two-yard Second and 12. Kellen Mond is 5 out of 14. 24 yards passing in the first half. He throws on the road, 39 yard line. Maybe a simple pass. After the loss of two. Look out, Mon. Done the blitz. He's going to spy Kellen Mon. Eyes on the quarterback, and as soon as Kellen Mon leaves the ball, a couple weeks ago in Oxford, Mississippi. Spiller in trouble in the ESPN. Here's an interception by Grant Duffy. Deep middle safety. Here he is right here. He's going to play the deep middle and watch him just lock eyes on the quarterback. Oh, Kellen Mond. It's an interception. With a rating of 94, he is the top safety on top. And Joe Burrow ran it. The check down. Edward Zeeler runs out of bounds, and that looks like the record it is. Joe Burrow now holds the SEC record for most passing yards in a single season. 42-79, that's four more than Tim Couch had for Kentucky back in 1998. What a season. I think is now uh, almost certainly going to end with the Heisman Trophy. Not end with it, but the Heisman Trophy gave part. Four-man rush, Burrow steps away from DeMarvin Leal, who's still in hot pursuit. There's a block, and Burrow is in. But if the defensive concerns are put to rest, I go back to LSU has the better resume. Yeah. And Alabama and Texas everybody. beat Florida, oh, LSU and Alabama with Tua. At least 42 points in every game this year, except Auburn, and of course, not yet there tonight with 31. Their offense got a little stacking tonight after the big start. Burrow, what a play! York to try another long field goal. This will be a 50-yarder. He made a 51-yarder in the second quarter. And Buddy Johnson, the leading tackle for him, told us yesterday, and Mike Elko, the defense coordinator, is super intelligent. He said he makes amazing halftime adjustments, so maybe he made some that have paid off tonight. Robinson, they developed a nice friendship. Finished the story after this play. Isaiah Spiller. And Ty Grudel. One more completion for Burrow would be 20 in the game. That would be 15 straight games with 20 completions. There it is. And it's a big one. Clyde Edwards, he layer inside the 30. See, this is a mismatch. This is Clyde Edwards Hilaire against Anthony Hines, a linebacker. There's no linebacker in the SEC, maybe in the country, that's going to cover him coming out of the backfield. He said that he had three straight games. The 20 yeah, plays right so here. Pretty well shattered that record. The longest active such streak in the country. Now they manipulate coverage with five minute rocks. Nice catch. They bring a blitz. Is this the record tire? Flag down. It's a touchdown for Jamar Chase. And if it stands, it's the 44th touchdown pass of the season for Jimmy Burrow's son Joe to tie the SEC record.
where they put him in the slot. So when he runs this slot fade, he has so much room for Joe Burrow to put the football outside, away from the defender to the outside shoulder. When you run that from the slot, boy, you got a lot of room as a quarterback. And Joe Burrow now with, uh, ties the record for the most touchdown passes in SEC history. Pressure. Travion Williams had more rushing yards as a true freshman. And Spiller has had this. And the guy, and the ball has to cross the line of scrimmage. I think he got outside the tackle. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna throw it away, Weidermeyer. Weidermeyer was a big basketball game from their side of the field. Been mystifying because it certainly seems like there's a lot of talent on this defense, they just haven't played up to it. Deep throw. Fisher, he really felt like their team took a baby. Well, again, I think Denver ran, I think they want to put an extra yeah, number eight in the bowl game, but they did play one of the toughest schedules in the history of college football, including three teams ranked number one in the AP poll. First time in history that's happened. Mom just loved it. This year, spectacular. records in the case of the 44 touchdown passes tied. A lot of really good quarterbacks who have played in this conference. Some great quarterbacks. Plus football's changed a lot. It's become much of Ohio right by Athens for his dad coach at Ohio U. Uh, Chase Young would be great as well. There's Racy McMahon racing off to the races. Back race. But if the question was the defense, right? They at least answer that question for tonight against a pretty good A&M yeah. offense. It'll be interesting, and you've made the point a lot of people have. It's important to be number one. It is. When the uh, college football playoff begins, because if you're number two, you can play the perfect regular season at 12 and 0. Trouble in the end zone. Butler stepped on the back line. On the field the Would have been grounded in the end zone anyway. The game. And now they've added two points to the total. It's going to be far and away the season low in total yards for AM. They had 273 last week in Georgia, and that was the season low. They're 109 below that tonight. Here's Holly. Okay, well, just before that safety, Ed Orgeron had gotten some of his defensive players together. Running back down, number four, true freshman from St. Rose, Louisiana. You know, just the focus that the senior night is yeah, on target, particularly early in the game. They came out firing one of the best one of the times in College Station last year. They made it. Jefferson 6 for 55 and a touchdown. That gives them 2,549 combined receiving yards, just the two of them. And that's more than the combined receiving yards. That's why I think those two guys are rated higher from an NFL standpoint, even though they change to teams. I think offense will win that game uh, in Atlanta. Game day will be there as well in Atlanta.